Hi, I'm Kristen Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number two out of 40, a walkthrough of the Etudes from Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2. This second etude is called Second Flight, and it is dedicated to Katherine Carlton. Let's get into it. Second Flight is dedicated to Katherine Carlton. She started playing the clarinet at age 11, and she played all through high school and got her clarinet performance degree at the University of Toronto and studied with the James Campbell. She then took a turn from performance and went into arts management. She's currently the executive director of Orchestras Canada, which is the National Association for Canadian Orchestras. Catherine was inspired by her 84-year-old mother who plays her French horn every day and returned to her clarinet beginning with a New Horizons group in Toronto in 2012. Catherine has now played with a number of other groups and small ensembles, and during COVID, she has especially enjoyed several online clarinet communities, clarinet events, and group lessons with Dr. Debbie Andrus. Catherine has been a wonderful part of Clarinet Playground, acting as a reader on several of my books. She is very thorough, and she's also smart as a whip. She's got all kinds of interesting musical facts stored in her brain like a supercomputer. Going back to the title, when I think about Catherine and her musical journey, she studied music intensively as a young person, then she poured herself into her arts administration work, and now she's back at the clarinet after a 25-year break. It's kind of like the opening and closing 16th note sections of the etude are this familiar but quiet buzz of excitement just below the surface, like, I've been on this ride before and I know it's going to be fun. Now let's get into the music. At the top of each page, you'll find two finger drills. These are critical to practice and make sure you're really comfortable with because that is what is folded directly into the etudes. For this piece, we have F to B flat, and then we push the register key and we play C to F. That involves moving quite a few fingers. So I think about um, lifting my fingers together and leading with uh, particular fingers. So when you're playing F to B flat and you're lifting, I think about leading with this middle finger. Let it kind of be the leader as you lift. And then when you place your fingers back, lead with your pinky and pretend like that one's going to land first. And that helps them move a little bit more like a unit. When you're up, you're leading with this. When you're going down, you're leading there. And for an added challenge, of course, you can practice this with your left key, your left C, and your left F. And that adds a whole other element of challenge. Now moving on to practice tips. You will find one or two practice tips at the bottom of each page of these etudes. And for this one we have practice the 16th note sections very slowly at first in order to train the fingers to work fluidly and to prevent tension. When a lot of fingers of one hand are lifting and going up and down, it can be really easy for them to get tight. So just pay attention to that and make sure you're staying relaxed and keeping your curve. The other tip is pace the crescendi thoughtfully in the two instances marked crescendo poco a poco from pianissimo to mezzo piano. That window is very small, so this is going to push you to start as softly as you possibly can, and you're going to crescendo, but make sure it never maxes out past a mezzo piano, and that can be a really big challenge. When I think about the style and character of this etude, I look at the 16th note sections. It's like a buzz of familiar energy, a propeller starting up, or maybe you're waiting backstage before a concert and you've got some butterflies in your stomach. Um, or maybe you got some good news and you're waiting to tell anybody about it. You want to just keep that good news to yourself for a minute and enjoy it. It's also very introverted. So I'll play a little bit of that so you get an idea of that character. <laughs> As you shift to the middle section, this is just pure flight. You're soaring, you move a little bit faster. It's just pure freedom, smooth legato and really long phrases. It's more extroverted and you just kind of let loose. I'll play a little bit of that too. At the end, the 16th note sections return, and we return to that sort of familiar buzz or that butterflies in the stomach and slow it back down to the original tempo. It does pick up speed at the end just to get to that last little bit, and there's kind of this satisfaction of pushing through a familiar challenge and you're ready to go on to the next big thing. <laughs> I want to bring your attention to a few rhythms in this etude before you dive in. Both first endings have an interesting syncopated rhythm that's definitely worth taking some time to count through and make sure you're really comfortable with it. 
I like to count one T te ta for my 16th notes. You might also count one E and a, or you might have another variety. But I count very carefully, make sure the rhythm is really solid. One T te ta, T ta three, four T te ta. And just get that rhythm really situated. I'll play that measure. <laughs> In measure 15 and 19, you'll find some ties. In 15, you have the F quarter note tied into the 16th notes, and in 19, you have the upper B flat tied into the eighth notes just before the triplet, which is another little part of the tricky part of that measure. But if we go back to 15, you have the F tie. Um, I often tell developing players or my students, you know, go ahead and tongue the tie until you get more comfortable with exactly where that takes off, or you can subdivide. So if you're subdividing in 15, you choose the rhythms that are in context. So I would play five 16th notes for that F, and that way you have like this 16th note motor going on in your brain, and that gets you really ready to figure out where you're gonna take off. And then if you were going to subdivide in 19, I would subdivide eighth notes starting from the F. So two eighth notes for the F, and then three total eighth notes for the high B flat. And that helps you really gain confidence in exactly where those rhythms land. And then of course you get the triplet at the end of that measure. So that measure 19 is pretty tricky with between the tie, making sure you play an eighth note after the tie and then going directly into a triplet. So tonguing the tie might really help um, as you transition into that triplet and make sure you're dividing the beat equally. Here's measure 15 subdivided. And here's measure 15 where I just tongue the tie. And then here's 15 normal. Now look over at measure 19. I will start by subdividing with eighth notes. And now I'll just tongue the tie. And then here's just how it's written. And now some areas for focus. The speed changes are totally at your discretion or your taste or even just your ability level. I would say learn everything very evenly and steadily and then play around with pushing the tempo in the middle section. But in general, that middle section, the soaring section, is meant to be quicker. Um, as you work on the 16th note sections, maintain your dynamic control, like we talked about earlier, that pianissimo to mezzo piano is very tricky to maintain. What I say is like right before you reach that mezzo piano goal, that measure leading into that, that's where you wanna do the majority of your crescendo. So keep the first couple of measures really subdued and distant, and then that slight crescendo will be a little bit more noticeable. The first and second endings might surprise you, so take your time to practice kind of maneuvering the roadmap of that, um, and then pace your shapes really thoughtfully in the soaring section. It's long phrases, so you could, might find yourself peaking a little too soon, um, so just really pace how you're doing that. And play, definitely play full value notes at the ends of your phrases before you take a breath. Play into the last possible minute and then take your breath. There are a few tenutos, and Dan Silver uh, was my teacher in Colorado, and I loved how he defined tenutos. It was weight as in time and weight as in heaviness. So you weight and weight on those tenutos, and it adds a, a nice little extra something in the music. And this, this whole etude is mostly legato, so just be really clear when, the, when you do have the staccato indications. Like in measure 14 and 18, those are a few places where you have some staccato indications. Plus you have this sort of F pedal down below. So you can practice that without the Fs and maneuver the notes and then throw those Fs back in. Here's the pickup to measure 14 without the Fs. And then here's the pickup to 18. And then you can throw them back in. Well, 
once you've really worked this thing up to speed, the breath marks work well. So if you need to breathe as you're going slower, of course, do that. I recommend using the plus one method while you're learning slowly. That way you're always playing from the beginning of a measure to the first note of the next measure. So let's say I was going to breathe after measure two. Instead of stopping on the bar line, I'm going to go ahead and play the first note of measure three. Play that downbeat, then take a new breath and start on the downbeat of measure three. Then I take my breath and start right at three. Second flight is the first etude in this book that has a low C option. Turn to page 46 and you'll be able to check that out. I definitely recommend that you learn the original first as a general rule and then head back to the back of the book and experiment with those. The first endings in this etude are taken down and then the pickup to 10 and the pickup to 18, those sections are also taken down. And then the second ending at the very end is altered slightly and includes a low D. And now a few final thoughts on this etude. If you have book one, go ahead and review First Flight because this is definitely a nod to First Flight and it's kind of fun if you play them back to back. And uh, focus on one measure, one section at a time. Just take your time as you go through and learn it. I always recommend recording yourself as often as you can to monitor your progress. Um, and this etude is mostly legato and I think I mentioned that before. Focus on really clean connections, especially when you have like the leaps from F to B flat. That can be a little cumbersome and make sure that slur is really clean and measure 16 and 19. And then treat your staccato like an island. Make sure it's really silent before and after the staccato note so you get a nice bounce. Um, you wanna have a nice clear clip or a lift to help those stand out a little bit more. In the soaring section, there are lots of register shifts. So you can use right hand down or some resonance fingerings or even side B flat on a few places where that might work for you. And then just overall let go fly with ease and momentum. That's kind of the, the whole direction of the etude. Let go, have some fun with it, and just feel like you're flying and free. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other. And head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much.